Right, seems like ages I've been to do just some little jobbing around jobs. This is a dodgy toilet that's been playing up. It won't flush properly, or when it when it does, it takes about four or five goes on the handle to get it to flush. So that tells me that the siphon inside is knackered. Now, what it will be is inside there, inside that siphon there is just a plastic gauze. I bet you any money when we take it apart, that gauze has just completely rotted away or it's got splits in it because it's just causing no vacuum unless you really pump on the handle. And when you pump on the handle, it's just slowly lifting the water up to go over the siphon. So what I'm gonna do is replace it with a Dudley turbo edge and a Dudley hydro flow float valve because as we all know you take them out and no doubt it's going to have a plastic thread in it anyway but yeah what I want to do being a Dudley ambassador anyway obviously I've got these in the van so we're going to swap this out take it all out completely take out the gubbins inside this system and switch it for the Thomas Dudley stuff. Right, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is doing well. I've got a little bit of a treat of a video for you today because it is something that every plumber will be able to relate to. We have all been there, a hundred percent guarantee. We've all been there doing this exact job and finding the exact issues that I get with this job. And to make matters worse, I don't get paid for it. And you'll see why at the end. Yeah, it's one of those things, it happens, and I know, every, again, everybody will relate to the reasons why. Um, so, yeah, it was, it should have just been a straightforward job, but like everything, in the plumbing game. Someone put in the comments, actually, a couple of weeks ago, um, plumbing seems to be just about problem solving, and nine times out of ten, a lot of the jobs that we do are problem solving issues for instance you'll come across something that you haven't done before or you have and it's not quite going the way you need it to go it'll be you've got to try and fix it or you've got to find a tool that will work to get it off so many different things but yeah that comment was right we do we just like problem solvers to be honest half the time so apart from that i hope everybody is doing well and also while i'm here i just want to give a big shout out as always to uni like channel sponsor they sponsored my channel for the last 12 months and they renewed my sponsorship so massive shout out to alex and all the team at uni like and what i'm going to do i'm going to put together a bundle as a giveaway very soon so keep your eyes out and i'll get that sorted and i'll put it on the channel but if you're looking to buy any uni like products use my code mjtiff and you'll get 25 percent off if for some strange reason Unilight have got a deal on at that time, still use my code because it will get you a free light or some sort of freebie that they'll chuck into it. So don't forget to use the code MJTIFF whenever you order anything from Unilight and they'll sort you out. Right, let's get on with the video and um, drop me a comment during the video and let me know how you would sort out each of the issues that we find on this little job. So first things first, we will turn the water off if it will turn off. Yeah, that's that off. Get out what we can, and then, as always, dead handy. Get the aquavac on it and suck out the rest of what's inside of our system. Just saves messing around, getting water everywhere. So let's suck that out. So that's all the water out the bottom of it now. I think we're gonna be all right with the wing nuts on the bottom of the system. They don't look too bad, but these are the ones that are gonna cause us a bit of grief. So I'll probably end up, I'll try and get them off. I don't think they're gonna come off though. So I'll probably end up with a multi-tool on them, cutting them off. And then we can see what's what with that afterwards once we split the system from the pan. So let's see if 
if it'll come out. I don't think it will. I don't know, it might do. I'll take the light in look. So it's properly rusted up though. It's one way of getting it out. So that's those out. Let's get that disconnected off the bottom of that ball valve. Let's get that disconnected off there. There'll be a little bit of water, but not a lot. They look fairly easy. So let's see if. Oh, I said it too early, didn't I? Solid. Oh. That is tight. Oh. Had a bit of a moment there. I thought it was going to be properly seized on. But showing no rust. But no, we're all good. So. That's that one off. Let's get the other one off. Hopefully it's not as bad. So I might have spoken a bit too soon with that because if you can see this one, this nut is just spinning completely with the bolt as well. So sometimes the plates that are on these have open gaps at the side like a a U-shape that side for the bolt to go in the middle and a U-shape that side. We've got this one out, we've got it completely disconnected. So what I'm going to try and do is pull the system that way to see if it will come off that bolt at the side. Hopefully it will, but we'll have to give it a go and find out. So if we... I think it's going to be properly rusty underneath here. proper minging under there look so let's get this off laying down on my mat yeah you're gonna need a new plate that's completely gone all that rust in there look yeah right let's strip this all off get it cleaned up and have a look at what we're dealing with See that? It's completely. Yeah. Jesus. Oh, can't get my grips in. the bottom of this as I said you can see the splits in it oh no it weren't it was the spring's gone so to be fair the actual plunger itself is still intact 
but the spring I've seen anything like that absolutely shot so that's why that weren't working so we get that out and we'll also get the ball, the ball valve out which is probably going to be the easiest thing to come out of this job so yeah some better days right let's get this all cleaned up get rid of that and start again so I've just took all the insides of that cistern out and started cleaning it up. Now I've never seen a cistern with a, a recess in the bottom of it here. You can see the outline of it where the actual plate was sitting, but there's a slight recess. I don't know if you can you can make that out there. Um, and the, the new plate is going to sit on top of there, but there's going to be that gap. So what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to pop to plumb base and see if they've got a little washer set that will sit inside there. I've got to pick another plate up because I thought I had one in the van and I'm sure I did a video where I used it and said I need to replace it in the van because otherwise it will catch me out and yeah, it's caught me out. So I'm going to have to shoot off, get a plate for that, see if we can get some washers for that. If not, I'm going to have to put some silicon or maybe even some CT1 or something like that in there to bridge that gap. So that's that, it's a bit of a pain and also we've now got to, I've cleaned it up as best I can, this is quite stubborn this bit, we've now got to get that bolt out of there. So I think the way I'm going to do it is to see if I can pinch the bolt on the top here and then underneath, see if I can work it off. So we're going to have to end up probably cutting that out. Let's give it another little go. Got these little tiny grips on it. So they're the only ones that will reach in and grab that. Uh, right, we're going to have to try it right. I'm going to have to cut that off as best I can somehow. And so we're going to have to cut that off as best I can, sort that out. This is one of them easy jobs. Replace a siphon, replace a ball valve in a toilet. What could go, well, it's not gone wrong. You come across this, them, now this little issue. So, yeah, right, let's get the multi tool, get this cut off, and then we'll go and pick up the bits for that. So, I'm gonna hold that bolt underneath these grips, if I can. And also hold it upwards to hold it slightly it was like that get the multi-tool and see if we can cut the top of that off and change your tactics because getting the multi-tool through that is not working. It looks like it could even very nearly slide out through that hole, but it won't. So I'm going to try and clamp it on the top and cut through the nut on the bottom. It's a right pain this is. Got it off, that'd be a bit hot. But yeah, that's off now. A little bit of a mess on the bottom, but let's get that cleaned up and we can start addressing this. At least I found one in the van. Right, with that finally done now, we can move on to fitting the siphon. This is the turbo edge adjustable siphon. These are spot on. They can be fitted and pull that pin out and they'll slide up and you can have eight inch, eight and a half, nine inch fitment onto any system that you want. Plus, as well, you can switch them off 
So that will be bolted inside your sister and if you wanted to swap that out for a new one, if there was an issue with it, it just slides in, clicks across and works a treat like that. But yeah, proper compact, adjustable turbo edge. So we'll get this in, we've got the pack here. I'm gonna make this in, but I'm also, when I make it in, I'm gonna have a look at this little issue we've got here and see what I'm gonna do with it. So let's get the pack and build this siphon up. So we've got a little washer that will go on there. And then let's just offer that in to the system. So if we put that there, so if we put that there, there's that gap. I'm just a little bit concerned about it. Um, you see here, this plate, if that plate is on, like so, there's gonna be a gap underneath it there. In theory, the washer, once tightened in, that washer should stop any water getting back up through there. So do I risk it and just fit it like that? I don't see there being an issue with it, to be honest. Um, I don't know what to do for the best with this. I don't really want to be filling it with silicon. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, because I'm putting all new stuff in, I'm gonna put it on with just that on there. Because it shouldn't, it shouldn't be an issue. Tighten it up and see what it's going to do. Once we put it on, if there is an issue, because we're putting all new fittings on it, it'll come off easy enough anyway. So, let's tighten this into here and see how it feels. Put a washer on on the inside. I've just never seen one like that before. As long as that washer holds, well, which it will, internally, it's not going to be a problem, but I've just never seen one without recess in it. Let's nip that up. Right, so that's that in now. Let's put our hydro flow, put the air gap in there. As always with the dilly stuff, brass body, just so the connection is a lot nicer and you know it's not going to cross thread. So we'll pop that in. So we've got that ready, let's put little bolts in there and our washer, close couple washer. Let's get that on. Right, let's lift that into position onto the top of the pan and get it bolted on, bolted down with the wings and see how we're looking. Always, every time. Get the little non-stuck wing nuts on, if we can. God, it's so fiddly. I need two hands for this one. Side. Right, it's beginning to bite now, so let's tighten that up there. So let's put the cold feed back onto the brass thread. Perfect, look at that. If we left the plastic one on there, the way this job is, you'd know full well that it'd leak. So we've got it put on now, we've got the wing nuts tight. I'm gonna leave them two back bits there so I can pop them in shortly, but I just wanna get the water on and check it's all all right.
So we'll let it fill up and give it a flush. So that is filled up now to the line. I think it's six litres in this system, so let's give it a flush and hopefully it's not going to come out of here because of that ridge. Pretty good there. No water coming out the back, which is always a bonus. Seems alright. Give it a few more tests, get it bolted back up, and have a clean down. There we go, all sorted, all working fine now with the Thomas Dudley siphon in there and the Thomas Dudley valve with the brass bottom just makes your life a hell of a lot easier. But little jobs like this, we're sticking wing nuts under there or bolts out the back that won't come out or random washers that are stuck to the bottom of the system, they'll always catch you out. So always be prepared. Take a multi-tool, I'll always say it, a multi-tool on a system swap or a toilet job can be a lifesaver. But that's that one sorted and I also know full well that I'm not going to get a penny for this job because this is at my sister's house. It's always them ones in it that go wrong. The ones where you try and help people out and everything that can go wrong will go wrong. But at least it's sorted.